I'm wrong, was talking about a, a competitive negotiation with all qualified firms. Uh, that, I believe, is in addition to the three existing service providers. This is recommendation. So, no, I don't think you injure yourself at all. Uh, working backwards on your questions, uh, you cannot uh, have much direct involvement in commercial recycling. So you could have a franchise for the commercial garbage which is collected, which you do. But the, the, uh, the 250,000 tons now, the private sector has the ability to knock on doors, and I can assure you they are knocking on doors. I've had my door knocked on twice at my business saying, hey, we'd like to put a bin out there, a 95-gallon cart or a four-yard container for you to put single-stream recyclables in. So that's where that number could erode. And then, uh, Commissioner Sharp, your last point, uh, what is single stream? I may have gone through quickly over that. Single stream is taking this plastic bottle, a tin can, a glass bottle, anything else that's acceptable material, mixing it with the fiber part, which could be newspaper, office paper, magazines, putting it in one container. Cardboard is an important one, putting it in one bin, and that works both commercially and residentially. So uh, residentially, it w would increase. We know for a fact, we don't have to do the pilots, the data's out there, it would increase your recycling rate, but that is decreasing the amount of tons available for your system. And on the commercial side, it will erode the tons that currently go into your system. So I hope that addressed all of yours. If I missed one, I'd be... So you can still, though, give us a recommendation on, you know, whether we want to pursue single stream versus... Because, there, because this issue, and Commissioner Becker brought it up, I believe, but this whole, you know, the floor that we've got to maintain, the 545,000 or 54,000, whatever it is, tons, we have to maintain that factors in when we negotiate to anybody who's going to be participating. I, I know that I'm going, to, I'm going to close this. I had a lot of questions, and I, and I really tried to get them answered yesterday and the day before, but we just kept adding to them. Um, the, um, the, oh, the issue of commercial. And this is just one commissioner speaking. I've never been satisfied with the way we've done it in the past. In fact, what I've always been told as I've been here, uh, there are two last issues I want to address. One, um, in order to maintain, this is what I understood, in order to maintain our low residential rates, we gave the, we gave the commercial activity to the three. Um, I don't think it's fair to a commercial entity that they are only given three or four or one uh, entity that they can negotiate with. I just think market-wise, it's just philosophically, I don't like it. Do you think that it's wise for us to stay with us? And if we did not, instead, as we move forward with whatever we do, renegotiation or going out to bid, commercial is going to be an activity which will be, you know, will allow free market. Is that something that you would recommend against or recommend for? Well, that's a, an excellent, and I'm going to give a more complicated answer to that uh, than you probably want. Um, that's a challenging issue. You have a, an interesting hybrid system. There are many counties around the state that if you win the residential franchise, you get the exclusive right to the commercial waste in that county. So our neighbors down in Sarasota would be an example of that. So the company that has that has exclusive right to all the residential waste and all the commercial waste. So that would be the far end, be it right or left, of what you're saying. That would be something that, from what I'm following, you would not like because only one hauler has access. You only get service from that service provider. That's it. There is no option. And the, and the reason for that is to what, maintain low residential rates? Uh, well, it would be uh, that county would argue that they have both very competitive residential and commercial rates, but yes, that gives them the ability to have those residential Does that in any way that injure the commercial side? Does a commercial entity say, you know what, I could have, I mean, in this tough market, I'm trying to save every way I can. Does it in any way impact their ability to make a savings? Yeah, for the, for the jurisdictions, and that's why I'm into all garbage is local, for the jurisdictions that choose to offset a lower residential rate, it's being picked up by the commercial side. And there are counties that do that. No sense naming it. Do we injure ourselves, though, on the other hand, if we just have um, Katie by the door, anyone can come in and do it? That's the other I mean, extreme. What's, what's the downside of that? There's got to be a downside. Yeah, the other extreme is you have an open commercial market uh, where anybody could do anything they want. You usually have to get obtain a license from the county to obtain that. You'd have licensing requirements. And that's a, an open market. And you have lots of trucks running around uh, competing for the business, lots of companies. Um, you kind of have a hybridized one, which if you said there's room here for three franchise uh, providers, and those people, sometimes they get a district. You have three zones, somebody can get each zone. You have the exclusive right to commercial in that zone. You've opened it up to more of a free enterprise system that said if you're one of our franchise holders, you can operate